Road Joy Show. so glad that you all are here. We are going to make some amazing things together today. My name is Kelsey and this is Code Joy. This is a show where you can um, interact live with the host, me, and also anybody else who's hosting with me as well. And today we are going to be making some awesome puppets and also learning about some awesome puppets too. But I'm going to send it over to my friend Jillian first from Family Maker Camp. And we're going to uh, hear from Jillian just a little bit about what Family Maker Camp's doing. All right, Jillian, go ahead. We're going to unmute you as well. There we go. There is. All right. Go for it. Oh, I think you guys are muted on your end. Sorry, like, can you unmute yourselves on your end? Right there. Here we Hi, go. let's try that again. This is Jillian from Make, and we're so excited to be partnering with Code Joy and to have all of you attending our first Family Maker Camp Code Joy combined class. Um, Maker Camp is brought to you by the members of Make Community, and we're really excited about what we have in store. And thank you for joining us and making together with us. All right, awesome. Well, we're going to come back to us over here. And um, a lot of teachers, a lot of people are new to using Zoom as a teaching platform, but that's something we've been doing at CodeJoy for a little while now. So this is for everybody who's here on Zoom and also for anybody who's wondering how to manage a classroom full of kids on Zoom. Well, here's what we like to do. We like to have some classroom norms. So in most schools, when you have a question or when you wanna contribute, what do you do? Everybody who's here on Zoom, show me what you do when you have a question at school. You raise your hand, right? Yeah. But here, I can't see that very well because you guys are in little small boxes. So here's how we raise our hand in Zoom school. Stick your hand out right in front of your camera and wave it back and forth. Do that, everybody, show me. Yeah, very good. Okay, so that is how you raise your hand here on Zoom school, okay? Also, we can't always talk to each other because a lot of times I keep everybody else muted so that people can hear me okay. Um, but if you want to show that you really like something that someone did, can you show me what that might look like? We're gonna take a look at everybody. All right, what does it look like? How could you show somebody? You could use your face. I love that, Margaret. What else could you do? If you really like something, you could do a, a thumbs up. You could do an awesome dance. Tama, that would be great. If you really like something someone's doing, you could give a thumbs up or a heart with your hands. So you have to show us how you're feeling. Also, we are gonna be making stuff today. And if you get frustrated while we're making stuff, show me what your frustrated face looks like. What does it look like when you're frustrated? <laughs> just look like this, does it pound your fist? And maybe if you're really, really frustrated, you might just have to just leave the room for a minute. And that's okay. We'll be here when you get back, all right? We put a bunch of safety features on our Zoom call today. So the people who are here are the people who are gonna be here for our lesson today. And also, like I said, we'll mostly keep you guys pretty much muted. Um, but if you ever have a question, like I said, you can wave your hand like that. You can also type it in the chat window. And for you guys tuning in from Facebook, um, if you guys are tuning in from Facebook or if you are joining us live from uh, the camp, uh, Family Maker Camp site, um, you guys can ask us questions there as well and we can try to answer them for you. All right, I wanna go around and do a couple of uh, suggestions. And I, uh, I'm sorry, a couple of introductions. So I'd love to unmute everybody and whoever wants to answer first, raise your hand and I'll call on you. I want you to say your, first, your name first name and what, and what you can't, you can't stop, stop snacking, snacking on snacking right now. Right. How about you, Tama? How about you, Tama? Um, um, my name is Tama. And what I love snacking on is... Um, <laughs> What do you love snacking grapes. on, Tama? Grapes. Grapes, that is an excellent snack food. Who wants to try next? How about you, Margaret? What can't, what just, you can't stop snacking on it now that you're in- Can't stop, uh, 
um, snacking on grapefruits, which I just started to like. Grapefruits. That's awesome. So <laughs> I love that you just started liking them and you can't stop. That's great. Anybody else want to share a snack food that they just, yeah. How about you, Aviva? What can't you stop snacking on? Veggie sticks. Veggie sticks. I love that. I love that. Um, how about Caitlin? I didn't hear that one from you earlier. What can't you stop snacking on? Fruit snacks. Fruit snacks. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, how about you, Aparna? What can't you just, you just can't stop snacking on it. What is that? Uh, sorry. Uh, like, is there a food that you love to eat? Oh, yeah. Um, popcorn. Popcorn. That is just like my friend Lila. That's the food you can't stop snacking on, right, Lila? <laughs> and how about you, um, Annabelle? What's your snack food? You just can't stop. Cheez-Its. Cheez-Its. There we go. All right. Great. So um, now we've kind of met some of our makers today, and maybe you are kind of like them in that you can't stop snacking on a certain thing while you're in quarantine. But later on, we are also going to have a very good friend of mine join. His name is Dave English, and he is a master puppeteer, and he's going to give us some tips and tricks while we build a puppet like this. Check out this puppet that I have made here. So this puppet, it's got a mechanism at the bottom, but it's just made out of a, a regular cardboard box. And as I pull on my string, it can open and close its mouth. So my puppet was made out of an ice cream sandwich box, just like that. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a supplies list up here. And then for all of you makers out there, whether you're on the Zoom call or whether you're just participating at home, I'm gonna leave this supply list up here for a second so that you can, um, so that you can go grab these supplies. So go around your house and grab these supplies right now. And while you do that, I'm gonna take this one apart so we can understand how it's put together. And then we're all gonna make it together, okay? okay. So you'll wanna grab a cardboard box, something like a cereal box or a Triscuit box. I went upstairs into my producer Matt's house and found this Triscuit box. Uh, there were still some Triscuits in it, but you know what? I thought it was a good sacrifice for the maker community. Um, so um, what else do we need? We will need some paper. If you've got some like construction paper or something, you can use some construction paper. Um, that is, uh, it's not necessary if you don't have any construction paper or if you only have white paper, you can. Your, your puppet will just look like whatever the box is, but you could also cover it in some paper. You could start doing that now if you want. You'll also wanna grab some string. See, I've got some like friendship bracelet string here. You could do friendship bracelet string or you could also use this like, like a thicker string. Um, your parents might have some string in the kitchen for like tying a turkey's legs together really quick. Um, all right, so you could use that. Hey, and I just saw someone very important join us, which is cool. So we're gonna introduce you in just a second, Dave. Um, you'll also wanna grab some paper clips, like so. You wanna grab a few of those. Probably two should do it. I do believe maybe three. I think you need three paper clips actually. You'll need some rubber bands. Now, rubber bands come in all shapes and sizes. You might have little itty bitty skinny rubber bands. You might have a little bit thicker rubber bands. I actually have a couple that are tied together here. You might have really, really, really thick rubber bands, short ones, long ones, doesn't matter. You wanna probably grab a couple just in case you need a couple of them though. I'm gonna grab a couple. Um, this part is optional. But if you have, put that back up there. if you have a pipe cleaner, one of those fuzzy pipe cleaner things, or even a twist tie, that can be helpful. But that part, you don't need that part if you don't have it. And then the last part is you'll need do, 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 some scissors, or if it's safe and you got to have permission to out to use these things, right? Some scissors, maybe a blade like this if you've got that. And if you're using a blade, you should also probably use a cutting mat. So to protect your dining room table, because if you cut through to your dining room table, you'll get in trouble and so will I, and I don't want that for either of us. So if you're using a blaze, use a cutting mat. And um, you'll also probably want some tape. Any old tape will do, clear tape, masking tape, whatever, whatever you've got there. All right, so while you guys grab that, I'm gonna check one other thing on my end. So finish grabbing those supplies 
And I'm gonna check one other thing on my end, all right? All right, so we've got everything we need now. And I am going to, we're gonna go ahead and start making our own version of this box puppet. I just wanna point out what all these pieces were used for. So the string pulls on the mouth, which is cut out of the box. And then do you guys see what's hanging out in the middle of the mouth there? That is the rubber band that's going through the mouth. It's like holding the lip back. And then the rubber band comes out the back side there and I just looped it on a paper clip. So we're gonna do this part together. Yeah. All right, um, Matt, do you think we should introduce Dave now or wait till later? Yep, we'll introduce Dave in a little bit. Okay, so everybody hold your, are you there? Dave's there. Yeah, I was, hey guys. Uh, I had to adjust because my phone go. kicked me out of the meeting for some reason. <laughs> so, Technology is great when it works just like you want, right? Well, everybody, instead. this is my friend Dave English, and he is an, an amazing puppeteer, a master puppeteer and educator. Um, and he is in his workshop. There you go. Sure. So I would love, before we even start making our puppet too much, let's go to gallery view here. And let's kind of Ooh. not spotlight anybody at the moment. And I would love for people to just take a look at Dave's workshop and ask him if you can see something. It's like, hey, can you bring that up here? Can you bring that, can we go over there? What do you guys wanna see? I'll unmute everybody so that you can talk to him. You're unmuted now, or you can unmute yourselves. What do you guys wanna see in his workshop? Will you spotlight him? Hey, welcome to my workshop. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk you around. Okay. All right. Show us in there. Look at all this stuff. Yeah, come on back to me. Okay. Right. There you go. We'll do it the old fashioned way. We'll pick up the computer and use it like a camera. I'll yeah. go slow as a motor isn't too wacky. This is my workspace. Go. I use this cutting mat so I don't cut into my table. Hey, These are the tools we're going to use today. Yes, I don't want your mom mad at, at any of us. <gasps> Th these are a bunch of projects that I'm working on right now. Whoa. This is a little puppet I made. Skeleton one. Let's look that at the skeleton, skeleton guy. Yeah. This skeleton guy. guy. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. What's he? Oh, this guy, Mr. Fun Fangles. Hello, hello, hello. I'm on the computer. Look at me. <laughs> I'll tell you about him in just a second. I have another version of him. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. That was the big Mr. Fun Fangles. And this is the small Mr. Fun Fangles. <laughs> Hello. And they both, both of those puppets have moving, moving mouths. And okay. I'll show you how those operate. Should I show them now? Yeah. How do the mouths work on those? Because we're going to make a moving mouth with our puppet as well in just a little bit. Can you Let show us how the, how the mouths work on yours? I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to do one loop around the studio. Okay. Just so you, so you can see the space I'm in. Yeah. This is a big pig mask I made. Whoa. <laughs> That's my sewing space. Some important puppet books and creatures. What what do you oh. sew? What what kinds of things do you sew? Oh, sometimes I have to sew so babushkas for old lady puppets. <laughs> she has a moving mouth as well. Ooh, that's cool. Uh, clothing for puppets. <laughs> This is Frederick Archer. He has a fancy suit. I didn't make that one. I had somebody better at it make it for me. Um, <laughs> Good to have friends who are even better at making stuff than you are. <laughs> yeah, helpful, right? Yeah. Um, this is uh, Stanley Onion, and this is an older version of Stanley Onion. These puppets that are on strings, these are called marionettes. Here's another marionette. Mm -hmm. This one is the famous Pittsburgh artist, Andy Warhol. Nice, yeah. His friend. These are my saws. Whoa. And, um, you know, one of the reasons I got into having a studio like this 
with all my tools up on my pegboard, with my sander. And I love, and these, this is my fabric area. And you guys said you like popcorn? Yeah. At the end of the day, I'll do a popcorn. <laughs> yeah. This is Mr. Popcorn. I'll do a little performance of him at the end of the day. Um, and, uh, that's amazing. I think, I wonder if that's Lila's favorite puppet. <laughs> yeah, it might be. He's eating popcorn right now. Lila's favorite, favorite puppet. <laughs> this guy's my uncle. This is my uncle John. He's like my grandpa. And I grew up hanging out with him, watching him work in his studio. Or his, he, he had like a little workshop in the basement. Yeah. In my mind, he was like the master tinkerer. And everything that broke, he could fix. He had all the tools, and he could make it. He could make it work. Um, and Did so now I'm going out. Question. That's how. That's yeah. how we're raising our hand in here. So let's go to Margaret. Let's go to Spotlight Margaret's, and let's unmute you, Margaret. And then, did you have a question or something you wanted to see? You can do that on the. Oh, you're unmuted. Go ahead. I have a, I have a question. Um. Yeah. Um. Um, how did you guys get inspired in puppets? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> that's, a, that's a terrific question. Do you want me to answer as me or as Mr. Funfangles? Uh, the little skeleton guy. <laughs> Mr. Funfangles, for sure. Yes. Mr. Funfangles, far more interesting and far more interesting guy. Um, the reason this guy started to build puppets was because when he was just three years old, a little tiny puppet man, a little baby babe, <laughs> he was watching The Muppet Show. Jim Henson, The Muppets, with his mommy. And he said, when I grow up, I want to be a puppet like that. Like one of those guys, a puppet. And his mom said, well, little Dave, <laughs> you cannot be a puppet because puppets are made from fabric and wood and felt and sticks like this, but you could be one of those guys who makes puppets <laughs> and his eyes got wide, <laughs> looked up at the television screen and said, that's what I'm going to do in my life. <laughs> that was a great question, Margaret. That was awesome. Can you show us how Mr. Funfango's mouth works? Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Great, because that will inspire us when we make our puppet mouths. So, Mr. Funfangles is made from felt, and my left hand goes into the back of his head. And up inside of his head, there is a little pocket where I put these fingers. And since I'm, I'm big, I have like big, big hands, mm -hmm. I, I fit them in there however I can, and I use these two fingers. But if you have a smaller hand or a longer, uh, like thinner hand, you might use different fingers because um, each puppet is built sort of specific to the person who is using it. Uh, so it fits their body and the way they move. Mm -hmm. So I, I go like this, watch my, watch my arm. So you can see my arm, my tendons yeah. moving my fingers and you can see his mouth moving. So when your fingers go down, his mouth goes down. Right, so when your fingers yeah. go down like this, that's opening uh, his mouth like that. Yes, and Great. that's not that's not consistent. It, that's it's not the same on every one of my puppets. So their mouths all work a little a little differently. And I have to when I'm using that oh. puppet remember how how the mouth works. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Do you want to see the the little Mr. Bunfangles? See how his mouth, his mouth moves? Well, what we'll do is we'll start making our puppet now. And then as we make it, like when we get to certain steps, it'll we'll need some time to finish that step. And so we'll come back to you throughout, OK? All right, so shall we start to make our moving mouth puppets? Give me a thumbs up if you are a kid and you're ready to make puppets. Yes, great. OK, so the first thing we have is a box. Now, like I said, you could cover that box in some paper if you wanted, but I'm not going to cover mine in paper. I'm just going to let it be a Triscuit box, and it will be a talking Triscuit box. Can we mute everybody, Matt? Thanks. OK, so the first thing we need to do, I'm going to grab a marker just to draw this out. The first thing we need to do is cut a mouth on it like this. So you want your mouth to, it can be square. It could also be just like mm, rounded like that but you'll want to draw on a mouth. Now you want to make sure the mouth is like about halfway 
uh, halfway up or further. And then I'm going to either draw on or you can just go ahead and cut out a mouth. And you'll want to make sure that it's at least about an inch tall um, and maybe about an inch or more wide. And then you can use your blade or your scissors to cut that. So if I was going to use a blade, I would use my blade. I'd be really safe with it and I would cut into it like so. If, however, you've got scissors that you're using, I can show you, you may be able to just kind of like poke a hole with your scissors like this. Maybe able to poke a hole like that. Um, or there's another great way to poke a hole if you don't. So you could poke a hole like that and then start cutting. Or there's another really great little hack that we use sometimes too, which is you can poke really good holes by shoving a rag or a towel. Make sure it's not your parents' favorite one, second favorite one. I always use the second favorite towel. And you can use a screwdriver and like pop it in there like that. And that can make a really nice hole, a great place for you to start cutting with your scissors. But I'm gonna use my blade. So step one, cut the mouth. Now you wanna make sure you just cut three sides of this rectangle. Don't cut out a full rectangle. You wanna make sure that it's just three sides of a rectangle and that you leave the other part open. And so now I'm not gonna fold it or anything. I'm just gonna let it kind of flap there, but see how it's still connected on one side? So we've got an open, an open mouth like that. That's going to be the mouth of our puppet. Just for funsies, I'm going to draw some eyes on it as well. There we go. Here's some eyes, just so we know what we're talking about when we talk about the face of our puppet. So you can draw a face on now, or you can wait till later to draw it too. Okay, so now this is a, it's a Trisket face. <laughs> okay, that may be the name of this puppet. It may be called Trisket Face. That might be what this puppet is called. Okay, so uh, we cut the mouth. Now, if I look back at our original one here, as I pull this string, there's a piece of string attached on the inside of the lip up here. And it also comes down off the lip, down into a hole near the bottom of the box. So let's go ahead and poke our hole at the bottom of the box. So you can either, if you're using a blade like I am, you can use a little X near the bottom of your box, like that. You can do the scissors method that we looked at, or you can use the screwdriver method that we looked at too, to poke a hole down there. And now is where your string is gonna come into play because you're gonna attach your string on the inside of the lip. I'll show you right here. I'm gonna get a piece of string. I'm gonna get a nice long piece of string. You can always cut it down and make your string shorter. It's really hard to make a piece of string longer though. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna make a nice long piece of string here <laughs> and <laughs> cut it. And then you can use your tape and you're going to tape on the inside of the lip and then bring it down, poke your string through that hole and that and then um, let it out the bottom. And Miss Margaret has a question. Let's go spotlight you, Margaret. What is your question? Um, well, I'm using just like a box and I'm trying to cut through the hole through it. And cut the mouth? Yeah, so. Are you having trouble? Yes, I am. You are having troubles. All right, tell me about your troubles. What's, I can't what's, poke a hole and do. What have you got to use? Do you have scissors to use? Is that your tool that you have? Oh, uh, Margaret. Oh, there we go. Do you have scissors, box. Using, Margaret? Yeah, I see your box there. That's a, that is a perfect box. Um, and you're trying to cut a hole in it and having trouble, right? Uh, and you've got little scissors. So you can use the point of your scissors. You can use the point of your scissors like kind of like this, like you can use that to poke through. Just make sure your fingers are really far out of the way, okay? So if I was gonna poke a hole with my scissors, you can kind of push them through like that. Your scissors actually have more of a point on them than mine, so they'd be a little bit better at it. It helps if there's a rag underneath or if you can grab a washcloth or something to put in there. Yeah, and it looks like Dave actually has a fun little hack that he's trying there. You wanna show us what uh, you're working on, Dave? And then we're gonna go, actually, let's go to Tama really quick. 
because Tama has a question. What's your question, Tama? Oh, you're muted. We're going to unmute you on the right side. Uh, scroll down over there. That's okay. And then you got to unmute yourself, Tama, because we, we unmuted you, but you got to unmute too. Yeah, almost. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. We can hear you now. What's your question, Tama? Um, um, does the string has to go through the, the bottom lips? It's going to go, I'll show you on mine here. It doesn't go through the lip. You tape it on like the inside of the lip. So see how I taped it on the lip there? And it comes over the lip and then goes through this hole so that when I pull on it, that's what's opening and closing the box like that. All right. So let's go back to Dave. What are you working on, Dave? What have you got going on? Can you can you hear me? We can. Okay, cool. Well, I'm just follow, I'm following the lesson plan, and uh, I can't sit still, and um, it's hard not to be the center of attention. And uh, I saw I saw that I saw that uh, I had a piece of cardboard sitting across the room. No, no, no. So I just want to be joining the fun. Yeah. That's great. I like those the character that you've drawn on your cardboard too. That's really cool. Is that an existing character that you already have somewhere, or is that something you're just making up right now? That's just an inward reflection. <laughs> is that is that a character that represents how you feel today? <laughs> yeah. No, I feel great. Today. I'm having an absolute great day. And a big part of that is being here. Yeah, here. Just um, okay. Yeah. No, this is just. I, I tend to make a lot of a lot of old man characters. I don't know what yeah. I don't know. That's great. Well, can I'm we go to gallery it. view, um, Matt? Because I want to check in on everybody. And if you'll unspotlight Dave's video, I want to check in on everybody. Show me if you've made one, how you've made it. And I see you've got a question, Margaret. What's your question? We'll unmute you. Go ahead. Um, how do you put this string in? Are we gonna get to that? Yep, let me show you. The string we'll, come, part. we'll come spotlight me again here so you can see me really clear. The string gets taped on the inside of the lip there, right on there, and then it comes over the bottom lip, and then it goes through a hole in the bottom of your box. And so when you pull the string, that's what opens it up. But the string just gets taped on the inside of the bottom lip and then goes down into a hole that you poke near the bottom of the box. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Margaret. Who else? If we go back to gallery view, who else has one? And if you have one, do you want to show it off? Show what you've got so far? How's yours going, Aviva? We'll unmute you. There we go. And you got to unmute yourself too. There we go. What did you mean, Aviva? <laughs> to do? We used wax string. I unfortunately gave her wax string. Not ideal for getting it to stick to tape. So I'm going to go get some different string right now. What's wax string? What's that? It's, it's really strong. Oh. However, it's dipped in wax. So if you want tape to stick to it. Mm -hmm. That might be, that might be trouble. Yeah. Decision. And you're like, it's not, Evie's like, it's not working. Yeah. <laughs> when you said wax string, I thought you were talking about dental floss, which I think might work. So if you're at home and you're trying yeah. to make along with us and you can't find string or yeah. all you have is pesky wax string, <laughs> you might try some dental floss at home. Um, how about you, uh, Aparna or Caitlin? Does anybody have one they want to show off that the string is working? Let's go to Aparna. We're going to spotlight you so you can show it off. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Well, can you nice. hear me? We can. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it's working. Great. That's wonderful. Yes. That's going great. That's great. Let's see. Does anybody Very else cool. have one they want to show off so far? We're not done yet. This is just part of it. How about Lila and Annabelle? Let's go see yours. That's great. Yeah. And when you pull the string, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it just <laughs> popped up. Let's see yours, Annabelle. You going to hold yours up? Uh-huh. And then pull that string. There you go. Nice. That's great. <laughs> Woo. Don't worry about that. I all my strings break all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Every every guitarist and puppeteer, I feel like, probably has the same problem with. Do you carry extra strings with you? Actually, that's yeah. a good question. What kinds of things break on puppets? Everything. Everything. <laughs> um, they uh, 
the strings break. Uh, the strings tend to break, but I use this. Um, Ooh, I can't even see that. It's so like invisible. Yeah, it's it's nylon. Um, let me show you the spool. Mm -hmm. So he's grabbing the spool of string to show us what that's like. Whoa. Nylon fishing line. <laughs> and it ties really strong and it mm -hmm. can hold a lot of weight. And it's it's um it's really thin and dark black. So when I'm using my string marionette puppets, you, you can't really see the strings so much. Yeah. Do you do you wear black then too to like keep it like to basically make the string blend in with what you're wearing? Yes. Whenever whenever I'm choosing to not be seen when I'm puppeteering, I, I'll wear black to sort of blend into the background. Yeah. I feel like uh, puppeteers and emo kids have something in common, which is that y'all wear a lot of black. <laughs> this is pretty cool. We're, we're way more joyful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's great. I have All a right. little harmonica around my neck, so that's, I'm, I'm, I can't be goth if I have a little harmonica. <laughs> so we've got, uh, I think most people have this part done now. We've got the string over the lip through the hole in the bottom. But as you may notice, you may be having the same trouble that I am, which is that the lip doesn't want to go all the way back in. And I don't want my puppet to just be like, huh, like, huh, like hanging with its mouth open. I want it to close its mouth when it's done speaking, right? So what we're going to do is this is where the rubber band and the paper clips come in. So let me show you on my other one how this works here. I'm gonna kind of peel back my paper so that you can see that underneath that paper, I've got a paper clip with a rubber band fed through the lip. So I kind of like, eh, like pierced the lip right in the middle. You can poke a hole right in the middle of the lip. And then that's where you're gonna put your, um, that's where you're gonna put your uh, uh, rubber band through. But uh, we need to attach our rubber band to our paper clips. So let me show you how to do that. Now, um, you may need just one rubber band. You may need a couple rubber bands. So let me show you two different variations here. If you have a thin box, like I have a pretty thin box here. So one rubber band is gonna stretch across my thin box just fine. This is the easy version, this is the basic version. Um, so we can, thread the rubber band over the paper clip here, and then do the same thing with another paper clip on the other side, like this, like that. And then you're gonna poke a hole in the lip here, and you're gonna poke a hole in the back of the box, and one side's gonna go through the lip, and one side's gonna go through the back of the box, all right? Let me show you that part. And then if your box is wider, and if you need two rubber bands, then I'll back up and show you that part, okay? so. I'm going to poke a hole right in the middle of that lower lip. Now I want to be sure I don't, I don't cut through my string. So I'm going to actually do it just a, just a skosh off to the side. I'm going to be really careful with my fingers so I know exactly where my blade's going. There we go. All right. And I'm going to put another hole right in the back of my box. That's where the rubber band is going to go through too. So I'm going to cut another X. That's my favorite way to poke a hole is with a blade and cutting an X. So I'm going to put my, my thing back on there. Looks like um, somebody has a question. I'm going to finish this step and then I'm going to come answer your question. Okay. So I'm going to put this through. I'm, I'm taking my rubber band with my two paper clips on. I'm bringing it through and poking it through this back hole. There we go. Do, 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 do stuck in there and that's what the paper clips for to hold it on there and then i'm going to bring it around the front and poke it through the lip right through the front like so might take a little doing there we go all right so there's my paper clip through the front and now when i pull my lip open it'll snap back mm, you may have this same problem that i'm having my rubber band is actually too long. It's not pulling it all the way back. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that and then I'm gonna show you the two rubber band thing, okay? So if your rubber band is too long, if it's not pulling it all the way closed, you can just tie a knot in your rubber band. So I'm gonna take it off of my paper clip. This is what we call engineering, by the way. <laughs> engineering is just a fancy word for I tried something and it didn't quite work. <laughs> and I need to try it again. 
That's what engineering is. Let me go to Margaret while I tie a little knot in my rubber band. Let's go to Margaret because I think Margaret has a question. What's your question, Margaret? Um, how do you, like, for making the mouse go back, how do you do that part? That's the part that I'm doing right now. That's the part that involves the rubber band and the paper clip. So if okay. we come back over to my screen, I'll show you, I'll, I'll break that down for you again to make the mouse snap back. So see, I just tied a little rubber band. I tied a little knot in my rubber band. I didn't make it that much shorter. I just made it a little bit shorter. Mm -hmm. This is basically like the same way you tie a balloon, tie a knot in the end of a balloon. Just kind of tie a knot in it there, like so. And then that'll hold it. There we go. That snaps it back open. Yeah, that's what I wanted. I wanted a mouth that closed all the way. Okay. And did, Margaret, did you have another question? Yeah, how do you poke the hole? Ah, however you poked the hole before. So if you poked a hole with your scissors, you could poke a hole that way. You could poke a hole with a, a screwdriver and a rag, if that's what you've got. Poking holes in cardboard boxes is sometimes the trickiest step, but there's a bunch of good ways to do it. So oh, where you, do you poke it? Oh, where? I see, I see. You'll poke one hole right in the lip, right in that bottom lip, kind of right next to your string, one there, and then another hole on the back. So one hole on the front and one hole on the back. And then that's- Why? Why do you put it on both? Yeah, why do you put it on both sides? The reason you put it on both, if I look inside here, so that this rubber band, boing, 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 goes through the puppet. And it's basically from the back of the head, it's holding the mouth closed. It's giving it some like tension on that rubber band and holding that, that lip closed right there. So that when I pull it, when I pull the mouth open like this, the rubber band pulls it back so that the string and the rubber band are kind of working against each other through the box. All right. Now I promised I'd show you a little hack. If you've got a really wide box, I had the problem where my rubber band was too long, but your rubber band might be too short. Let me show you a quick hack if you're building along at home and you need that. So I'm going to grab another rubber band and show you real quick here to, uh, you'll, you'll take your two rubber bands, you'll put one through the other one, kind of so it's like hanging out like that. And then you'll kind of feed one side through the loop on the other, and then you'll pull it. And now you've got a rubber band that's twice as long and still has a loop on either side like that. All right. And if you, uh, if you are watching at home, you can like back that up, slow it down and watch it over and over again. It's like tying your shoes. The first time you're not very good at it. The second time you're okay. And the third time mm, you're a master. That's how most things work in the maker community. So let me go over to Dave. Um, what, are, uh, what are some other puppets that you have behind you? I'd love to check some other ones out. Oh, cool. Um, maybe I'll show you the, the, little, the little puppet stage that I'm working on. Uh, right now for an upcoming show. Uh, and it's the one that happens to be really similar to the project we're working on now. Whoa. Why heck, here's, here's a good angle. Um, it's the same engineering concept that you kids are using to make your mouths move. That being, it's a, it's a cardboard box. This is an Amazon box that some stuff came in. <laughs> and this is a piece of a uh, shipping, uh, like some an electronic came inside of this. And that was just the, the shipping material that kept it <laughs> safe in the box. And I thought, wow, that looks like a cool face to me. I'm going to make that like sort of like a volcano god face. That and I have awesome. a string through the lip the exact same way you guys do. Mm -hmm. I use that real thin, that real thin string, that black stuff that I showed you. That's, you can't, you almost can't see it. Almost can't see it. And he goes, we're doing a great job. I want everyone to know they're doing a great job. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey! <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so I'm, uh, great, Dave. So I'm doing you're saying this like mechanism that we're working on of a string pulling on a lower lip for something is this is the same thing that like real puppeteer you're a real puppeteer i'm a i'm a teacher who learned how to make puppets but you're a real puppeteer so like if this is the same thing that you use yeah totally well i'm using the same method right now and whenever we we spoke yesterday we're talking about about what, what we should show the kids 
Yeah. And it just happened to be that I was already going to use something really similar. And um, so you'll see that I don't have a back to my box the uh -huh. way you guys do. So I put this, I glued this popsicle stick in place oh. and put two little pins here and there to hold it in place. So then I'm going to run, I put a hole right here. Can you see that little hole? Mm -hmm. so really tiny, tray. yeah. Through there with a little bead on the end, which which allows me to oh. you can see how it's moving. So we're about why do you have a bead on the end? That's that's the next step that we're gonna do. That's a perfect transition. Why do you have a bead on the end of it? Oh, I have a bead on the end because I have uh, my hands are anybody's hands, even if you're a little kid with with, with little fingers holding onto a thin piece of string and pulling it is difficult because you keep losing it. It keeps yeah, falling out. Yeah, slipping out of your fingers, right? But if you go like this. But the bead gives you something to hold on to. The bead gives you something to hold on to. It looks like um, Tama has a question. We're going to spotlight you, Tama, and make sure to unmute yourself. Yep, we can hear you. All right, what's your question? Um, my box is too thick, so whenever I open it, it cannot open. Ah, it's like really, it's hard. It's really hard to open it there. It may be that. It um, doesn't close. Yeah, it closes good, but it doesn't open great. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, so what you may need to do if you've got, I'll grab a piece of thick cardboard. Um, so in mine, if we come back to my video here, in mine, my this was really thin cardboard. It's called chipboard. So this is a great material to make it out of, but even if you're using really thick cardboard, this is called corrugated cardboard. It's got like two, uh, two parts to it and kind of this corrugation in the middle. This is a lot harder to bend, but what I did on mine, I did not bend my, I did not like bend mine right here where the lip was gonna open because I didn't want it to stay open too much. But now that it's got a rubber band, what you can do, Tama, and if you're using corrugated cardboard, you might need to actually bend that with your fingers, bend it open, and that way it'll actually open. And the other thing that you may need to do is that you may need to, if it's, uh, if your robot is like, huh, if it's getting stuck with the lip, like huh, going inside of the mouth, you may need to use, this is what the third paper clip for it is for, just in case you need it. You may need to put that third paper clip just over the edge there and it kind of becomes it reminds me of like a like a bulldog's mouth how the teeth stick out <laughs> on the bottom on the bottom lip that's kind of what this does it prevents it from going back inside the box so you may need a third paper clip to just prevent it to kind of keep the lip on the outside of the mouth just a little bit so that when you want to open it it actually opens so bending the cardboard and then well, putting a little it What's that? It doesn't close. It doesn't close. Do you have the rubber band in between to help it close? Yeah. Yeah. Is you, let me see. Can you hold it up and show me? Oh. But only when I do this, it doesn't close. Hmm. That's an interesting question. If you push the hole a little bit further down. What if you ah? If you put your hole a little bit further down. If you make a little bit more of a difference, if we come back over to mine, I'll show you. Um, you might move your hole, like if your hole was here, you might just move your hole a little further down on your box, as far down as you can make it. Do you have any other advice, Dave? I'm, I, I'm thinking it might be also, um, the word I'm gonna use is manipulation, mm. and that means uh, the way you control the puppet. Um, I know a lot of times whenever I'll, I'll hand a marionette or a puppet, to a kid who doesn't have a lot of experience using them. Um, and I had the same instinct um, was to pull the strings too hard mm. and, and too much. Being really gentle with it um, yeah. might, might give you a little, a little different look. If you yeah. pull the string less, less hard and more like just with your finger strength. Yeah, if you just give it a really mouth. small, gentle pull, it'll just barely open the mouth rather than getting it stuck open. That's some good advice too, Dave. Looks like Margaret had a question too. We're gonna go over to you, Margaret, and we're gonna unmute you. Go ahead. Um, she got the she got the rubber band through uh -huh. the um, through the hole, but missed the next steps involving the paper clips and stuff. Sure. 
Yeah. Ah, so the paper clips actually make it way easier to get your rubber band. I'm very impressed that you got your rubber band through the hole without the paper clips. You are a <laughs> persistent kiddo. So what the paper clips do is they actually make it way easier to feed that through as well. So if you've got it, um, if you've got your rubber band through, just loop the paper clip on one side. So you don't have to take it out or anything. Keep it through there. Okay. But it's through the lip. Is that where it's supposed to go? Through the mouth? It's through the bottom lip and through the very back of the puppet. So it's oh, the okay. Okay. Side. Yeah. Okay. Got it. But yeah. Right. It goes through this way. So you'll, this is basically just asking, acting as like a stopper. So your paper okay. stops it from going through the lip. And then it also stops it from going through the back of the puppet. Okay. That's great. what I was for. And Thank the paper you. clip really helps you push it through the hole. I'm very, I'm so impressed that you were able to push it through without the paper clip. That's, that's persistence. That's great. <laughs> yeah, that's not easy. All right. So as people are finishing their, their puppets, I want to give people a chance to finish. And we're going to do a little performance in just a couple minutes. So make sure that you've drawn some eyes on there. If you're like, you know what? I didn't want to do paper before, but I need my puppet to be green or whatever it is. Finish decorating your puppet. Take just a couple minutes to do that. I'd love to take a look at with you, Dave, um, at your like, you have like a whole village set up back there with like a house. I've been curious about that the whole time I've known you. And I don't know that I'm so curious. <laughs> I'm building what's called a toy, a toy theater show. And so I'm using the same materials that everybody has around their house. Yeah. And you can see that it's more of that corrugated cardboard. Uh-huh. Can you see that? When I turn it, see how the cardboard is the same as, as the as as the boxes in your basement or in the hallway or wherever they might be. Yeah, everybody has this special stuff. Special cardboard, or do you just use Amazon boxes? I use a lot of Amazon boxes. <laughs> uh, now and again, I'll use chipboard or I'll use some nicer materials. My real trick is that I don't, this is, um, this is Francis the cat. Now he's just a piece of cardboard. Yeah, he's, a, he's an Amazon box, that's for sure. <laughs> but he, uh, <laughs> he's painted. Um, oh, but a lot of them, great. a lot of them I use a, uh, a process called collage. Mm -hmm. I bet you some of you have done collage before, and this is just uh, this pretty handmade paper that I mm -hmm. that I use and I cut up and make little oh, outfits. Makes, like, yeah, that's cool. Something I love well, about your like, puppets too is they're always two sided. It's not the same on both sides. Like you see the back of the head or the 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 butt of the pants or whatever. All right, we're gonna go over to Tama really quick because Tama had a question or a, a, something oh, cool. they wanted to contribute. All right, you gotta unmute yourself. Yeah, there we go. What was your question, Tama? Um, because with that second paper clip, um, it doesn't. It still lets the mouse go in the mouse. Go inside. It's still letting that lower lip go inside. You may need to on with your second paper clip. I'm gonna rearrange mine. You may need to like like put it up a little bit like this, like rather than letting it go all the way down. You may need to put it up a little bit and then tape it in place like this to, to make it have something where it, it can't go back in there. So I might tape it in place like that. So it's really sticking up. Might make a good, like if you're thinking about what this puppet's gonna be, it might make a great tooth. If it was just like a hmm, hmm, I'm gonna, like a tooth. I'm gonna give there. Mine or maybe a like bit. two teeth. I told you it reminded me of a bulldog, right? So maybe it's like a, maybe it's a bulldog puppet. I don't know. Let's take a look at what Dave's made as everybody finishes theirs, because then we're going to do a little puppet performance. That's great. That's so I fun. Gave, I gave mine the lower lip so that it won't. <laughs> so you can't see where it, oh, that's cool. So you added a little a little bit over the, over the, the, the lip part there. So you added a lower lip, that's cool. Yeah, so it stops from going back inside too. Cool, yeah, it, it, it sticks out the sides rather than out the top. That's why you're a master puppeteer. That's, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, when you when you, when you do that to a puppet, when you give it a lower lip, does that is that a, like a rule? Does that make it look sad? Does that make it look mean? Like, does that give when you're when you're kind of animating something by drawing it? What effect does that have on a character that you're drawing when you give it a big lower lip like that? I'm so glad you asked me that. I'm re I really am so glad you asked me that. So, I'm friends with puppeteers all over the country. And I uh, spent a week learning with a puppeteer in Los Angeles. 
and he's a brilliant puppeteer, one of the best in the country. And he uh, he makes these beautiful sculptures, and his his marionettes don't have moving don't have mouths that move. Okay. And he he told me sometimes your puppet needs a mouth that moves, and sometimes it, it doesn't. So you can make a, a a sculpture that has a totally still face, and it's um it's all about the expression. I'm gonna grab this guy in the green bathrobe real quick and bring him right okay. here for demonstration. Great. And while Dave is grabbing that, I want everybody else to get ready because what we're gonna do after Dave shows us this last puppet is we're gonna go into gallery view and I'm gonna have you guys all hold your puppets up to the screen. So if I had a, just one screen like you guys, I would hold this like right up to the camera and we're gonna give a little puppet performance to a song called Mana Mana. I don't know if you guys know this song. Mana Mana. Do, 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 do. We're gonna do a thing. And uh, so I'm at, yeah, I think Margaret knows the song. Um, so what we're, we're gonna do that in just a minute. So get your puppets ready and we're gonna give a little puppet performance. Okay, Dave, show us what you got. So this is, <laughs> this is Stanley Onion. I love him. His mouth doesn't move, but he's got that, that lower lip. So it gives him a lot of expression and he's sort of a pouty, grumpy old puppet. And originally I made his mouth to move and then I decided to keep his mouth still because he still portrays so much emotion even with a, a, a mouth that's still. Yeah. So when you give him a big lower lip like that, you think it makes him look like pouty? Yeah. Kind of? he's, he's grumpy. Grumpy. Like, Doesn't like kids making noise and playing with puppets. <laughs> That's I have great. a marionette like this right beside me that has a, has a mouth that does move and I mm -hmm. use a rubber band for tension in it. That, that keeps it that keeps it closed. That's cool. Well, uh, makers, let me go to gallery view really quick and check in on you guys. Give me a, a, a number, one or two. How many minutes do you need to finish your puppet? The max is two. <laughs> two. All right. So you have two minutes to finish your puppet and then we're going to do our little puppet performance to to uh, move us out so you have two minutes to finish your your performance or your puppet all right let's go back to oh my gosh is, that's mr fun fangles right but the small marionette yeah. version yeah this is this is marionette mr fun fangles <laughs> <laughs> so his mouth, ah, ah, his mouth does open oh my gosh that's so fabulous so how does that mouth work you said it's got a rubber band for tension and then is that a something you're you're doing up on the top there? Yeah, everything on a marionette is controlled up here oh. on the control bar. Okay. So if this is a video game, this is the controller you use to make the little guy move around. It's <laughs> That's smart. Uh, the 500 year old version. Um, <laughs> I made this little gadget, uh, and this this when I move this forward, it allows a string uh. it takes the tension off of this string that you probably can't see mm -hmm. that string lets mr fun fangles mouth open drop when ah. i push it forward his mouth goes bah. so does the string that you're that you're controlling go through the like the top of his head yes ah you know, okay one. So the string that you're releasing the tension on goes through the top of his head and the rubber band is on the thing at the top. So the rubber band is mm, keeping his mouth closed just like it is for ours, but it's controlling a string that's coming through the top of the head rather than going down through the bottom. So mm, it's got tension. And then when you release the tension, ah, the jaw drops. That's cool. That's really exactly. cool. Yeah, let's take a look inside. Yeah, exactly. Nice. This is- with a There's whole, the hole, I see it. And see where the little knot is? Uh-huh. It's under the lower lip, just in the exact same place your product, our products we're working on today. That's great. So this this yeah. is an important point. If you're gonna have a mouth that opens and closes, having a little the string or the knot or the connection here is a real common That's engineering an important uh, spot. Really. Yeah. That's really cool. I'm so glad that that you showed us these all these different examples of puppets that have the same, basically the same mechanisms that we made today. Those are used by, by real deal puppeteers. So you yourself, if you have made a puppet like this, you are a real deal puppeteer, just like pros do. 
<laughs> and so am I, you're right. So I'm gonna um, cancel my spotlight so that we can see everybody. And I would love for everybody to hold up their puppet that they made so that we can show them off a little bit. I'd love to see them. Let's go to, yeah, let's go to Thomas. Let's go to Margaret's. Everybody's is so great. Keep holding them up. We're gonna spotlight you guys one at a time. That looks great, Tama. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it might, you might have to pull it from the front. That works great. There you go, yeah. Oh my gosh, I love that you made it into a tooth. That's so funny. I love those eyes. Those That's eyes great. are great. Those are great. Let's go to Aviva. Oh my goodness, look at that. Show us how it works. Fancy hair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Is yours? Does yours have a name? It says my name is, and is that Mr. Box? Yeah, Mr. Box. <laughs> <laughs> That's who's delightful. The, who's Mr. Oh Box's my gosh. Little friend? As you as you noticed from Dave, my friend, our friend Dave, he gives all of his puppets crazy names. So I love that yours has a crazy name as well, Aviva. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, Let's nice go to Margaret. Work. Let's see yours, Margaret. Show it off. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so fun i love that when you yank on yours too like it moves the whole box it really it's really funny it's really funny let's go to annabelle and lila let's take a look at theirs let's see uh and margaret we'll come back to you it looked like you had something you want to say yeah let's show it off annabelle <laughs> this is uh charles <laughs> Charles, the non-dairy yeah. beverage. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, non-dairy Charles. <laughs> non-dairy Charles. <laughs> Let's see yours, Lila. I'm not done finish coloring it, but this That's is okay. It says Greg right here. But yeah. I see it. Give, give it a tug. Back. Let's see. Let's see it go. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> That's awesome. That looks great, Lila. That's so cool. Who else do we want to go to? How about you, Caitlin? Do you have one to show off? Let's see it. Looks like Caitlin's maybe finishing hers up a little bit. Yeah, there it is. Let's see it. Oh, that looks like someone we know. Oh my gosh, does that robot, does that puppet have a goatee? Is that puppet Dave? <laughs> the blue light and everything. The blue light and everything. Caitlin, that's, that's, that's really great. Let's great see. work. Let's go to Aparna. Let's take a look at yours, Aparna. Yeah. All right. There we go. Very nice. Very nice. Um, does yours have a name, Aparna? Oh, you're muted. You're muted. See if we can unmute you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's yours? Do you, does yours have a name? Mr. Cake. Mr. Cake. Love it. Love it. We've got Mr. Cake. Cake, Mr. Box. These are great. Uh, non dairy Charles. These are. <laughs> <laughs> These are amazing, friends. This is great. Okay, so let's finish it out today with a group performance. Okay, so we're all in gallery mode, so everybody can see all of us. Hold your puppets up to your camera. Maybe even put them in front of your face. Exactly. And I'm gonna play our song. And even if you don't know this song, it's okay because you'll catch on really fast. Okay. But the basic words are mana mana. Everybody, make your puppet say mana mana. Okay, you've got it. Ready, set, here we go. There might be an ad. <laughs> you caught us. We were using YouTube. There was an ad. <laughs> okay. Ready, set, here we go. <laughs> One, two, three, go. Do, 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 do. Manamana. Manamana. Oops. Manamana. 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 
Do a little dance. Hold your hand out in front of yourselves, just like this. Give yourselves a pat on the back, because that was some <laughs> great making, my friend. That was awesome. I am so proud of all of you. And for all of you who made along with us on the Family Maker Camp page or on our Facebook, that was amazing. Um, so I want to um, kick it over to Dave really quick, because Dave has a website he wants to tell you about real quick. I'll, uh, we'll show you about our website and then we'll kick it over to Jillian. All right, Dave, tell us about your website, Dave. Hey, thanks hey. for hanging out in my, my studio with me today. It's a real uh, swinging place. <laughs> I have a website. It's davespuppets.com. My name is Dave English. Uh, you can find my work there and find out what I'm up to and what's coming up on my website. That is great. Dave, thank you so much for joining us today. You are an amazing puppeteer, somebody that um, Matt and I have, have heard about for forever. Um, just like traveled all over the world, studied puppets everywhere, been an educator for forever. I mean, I'm just so, I feel really lucky that we were able to work with you and learn from you today. Thank you so much. Flattering. Thank you. It was a, it was a privilege to get to hang out with everybody and see your, your tremendous creativity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dave. Um, do we want to give a sign language round of applause for Dave for joining us today? A round of applause, a round of applause. Very nice. <laughs> yes. All right. And so we're going to we're going to show you we have a little um, a little bit um, about Code Joy. We're going to show you real quick and then we'll kick it over to Jillian to uh, close us out for the day. So here we go. Thank you so much for joining us. To learn more, head to codejoyedu.com. There you can see our upcoming classes and even join our Zoom classes. If you liked what you saw, you can contribute to our virtual tip jar or help us boost our message on social media. On Twitter, you can follow or tag me, our director and producer, Matt, or hashtag CodeJoy. This is a great way for you to share what you make with CodeJoy. Until next class, stay curious. All right. Uh, you see how quickly I changed my sweater there? Pretty fancy, right? Uh, we're going to kick it over to Jillian, and she's going to tell you a little bit about Family Maker Camp and the next things that you can do together. Jillian. Yes. Well, thank you guys for joining. Um, again, this is Family Maker Camp. We are a bunch of people working at home with our kids right now, trying to figure this all out together. Um, you can learn more about us at makercamp.com. And Maker Camp is brought to you by our wonderful community, Make.co. So thank you. We have Matt and Kel uh, Kelsey, Matt, Dave joining us here next Thursday. We have our Maker Camp happy hour um, tomorrow night. So please check out our events at makercamp.com and join us again. And share hashtag make together um, and we'll put you out across our site. Thanks again. Awesome. I love your Maker Camp shirt, Aviva. That looks great. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great day, guys. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Great All job. Right.
Bye. This was the funnest. We'll see you again on Thursday. Oh, we'll see you again on Thursday. We're doing another class with Dave where we are going to be making a whole different puppet together. So definitely tune in at four o'clock PM Eastern time, or that's one o'clock Pacific on Thursday, where we are going to make another puppet with Dave. All right. We'll kick it over to Dave because Dave has a great sign to show all of us. How'd we do, Dave? Good hey. job, everybody. <laughs> nice work. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a great <laughs> night.